People should go and watch the full uh, radar, which Katie yeah. filmed with Breakthrough News, um, yeah. and which is now available. And you'll see how well argued and thorough and, yeah. and reasonable, I think, the case is that you make irrefutable, in my view. Yeah. And so your first sign that there's something a little off is they have you record, they have Robbie record this pickup that's basically like reading some canned statement kind of from the ADL, which is right. pushing back. And so that's kind of your first indication that something is going on here, right? Yeah, right, yeah. So I think like, oh, that's weird. But I also knew, I mean, what's what's interesting is that I had been very critical of Israel in the past. Um, but and I thought this would get, you know, people upset. But I didn't think anything would happen at the Hill because I had been so critical of Israel in the past. So anyway, hmm. so that pickup happens. Then I'm on my way out. I'm rushing out the door because I have to uh, record useful idiots. Mm -hmm. And uh, I get a call from the producer who's clearly kind of upset. And she tells me that, you know, she wanted me to hear from her that they weren't going to be releasing my radar because higher ups had seen it and they uh, had some problems with it, some issues with it. And then she told me that they had a new policy of which she was not aware, which was that um, they don't do op eds on Israel, either written uh, or video. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then she told me that the good news is, though, that they do you can do segments on it. So at this point, my understanding was you can't do a straight to the camera monologue or written or write for the, the Hills newspaper. Not the moot point for mm -hmm. me, but you can't do a straight to the camera monologue on Israel. But you could talk about it as a guest. Uh, during a segment. So okay. during a, a discussion. Right. OK, so um. I and the producers were really trying to do the right thing. We were talking about maybe they it's not would on play. the producers. Yeah, no, it's not at all. We were going to play maybe the radar and then have someone from a with an opposing view respond to it. And we went back and forth. And then Wednesday, I got a call from Bob Cusack, who was just like, we're not going to run it. And I asked why. And he was like, well, we get a lot of pitches that we don't take, which I was like, but that's not how radars work. Like, maybe that's how the newspaper works or the website at the Hill, but I know that that's not how it works because I have friends who do this and write radars and I know that they just send them in and they are not checked. And that's not a dig on the, the producers. It's just not, that's not how they do it. It's like right. the person creates it and they read it. So I was a little confused. And he was saying it wasn't like their sweet spot of coverage, which also I found confusing. Um, and so, uh, and I was like, is it because he's like, but because of, it's about Israel, and he was like, oh, it's for the rationale that I said. I honestly couldn't understand if he was saying yes. He said yes, but I couldn't understand if he was like, yes, that was the rationale, or yes, that the rationale is what I said. So I, I don't want to—he didn't, like, overtly say yes. To me, it's clear that that's what it was, because that's what I was told by the producers. Um, so then at this point, I'm kind of, like, stunned and bummed, and then I— text the producers, okay, so can I talk about it on my segment? Because this was a Wednesday and I record my weekly segments on Thursday mornings. Mm. So I go, can I talk about it on my segment? And they're like, oh, this person should have emailed you. Uh, Sarah, Sarah, who's with Nexstar, should have emailed you. So I check my email and that's when I see, hi, Katie, we won't be needing you to come in to do your radar tomorrow morning. Please send all unpaid invoices. Best of luck. And I was mm. like, are wow. you kidding? I couldn't believe it. I was stunned. I was stunned because I thought that we were having conversation that they value. I, I thought that they valued me just like, I mean, look, they're a corporation. I thought they valued me because I went on every week. Right. And they need they need the content. I'm not going to lie. I didn't think that they valued me as a, a voice. It's like a hum human no, being. A human being. Yeah. 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 Um, but I did. And I felt like totally disposed of. And I was pretty shocked. And I also... I was worried when I was there, like I was really worried that the story was going to be leaked because I knew that there was a leak because I saw those two Daily Beast pieces. Yeah, somebody's that, been talking to the Daily yeah. Beast so, a bunch. So, yeah, and I really sure. also was like, that can't come out. Like we don't, you don't want that to come out that you're censoring people. And I, you know, so I was really trying to make this work and I, I would have made the compromise of just doing, if, if it, this is a little, maybe it sounds not that, brave. But if my staying on being able to do Israel content meant that it had to be in the form of a segment, not a monologue, it would have been messed up. But that's maybe I was thinking maybe I would just do that. Because if I, I wanted, I'd rather that 
than no coverage at this kind of mainstream corporate entity because I wanted to make sure that I did get it out and I was able to cover it all the time. Another thing is that this um, very censorious um, kind of Israel lobby group called um, Honest Reporting had written a piece about me. Honest uh, Reporting. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like an ironic. They don't realize it's an ironic name. But uh, they had written a, a very stupid report like called What the Hill? Because my monologue was on the hill. Uh. Um, what the hill? And then they, uh, so they, there are a lot, there are a lot of groups that, and part of the reason I worked so hard on the monologue, I mean, I always would have because it's a serious, uh, such a serious issue. But I was like super. I also quoted, sorry, the other people I quoted to make the case is I quoted uh, Desmond Tutu, Nelson Mandela, and a current South African minister who also say it's apartheid, um, and. Well, uh, Tutu says in a place, another place that I didn't quote because I didn't find until after, he actually does say it's apartheid. In this place, he just makes shows how similar the experiences are in yeah, apartheid so you, South Africa. You knew that there were some sort of knives out for you. So you made yeah. extra sure that right. this particular monologue dotted every I and yeah, crossed yeah, every T. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, from my reading of the situation as an outsider, it does sound to me like basically you made an ironclad case that Israel is indeed an apartheid state. Yeah. And because it was an ironclad case, they got skittish. They got scared because it's hard for them to be like, no, oh, this is just an opinion. Like, d d this is not yeah. all that big a deal, bro. So before you say anything, yeah, I want to I want to commend you because okay. what you did was very, very brave. Um, what people don't understand is we're you know, we're we're regular people like anybody else. So for you to do this, you lost income. Yeah. You lost access to a large audience right. and you did yeah. it because you said, I need to stand on principle on this issue. And there's a bigger issue, which is, OK, so if you're going to do, you know, a little bit of censorship here and a little bit of censorship there, where does that end? What's right. the limiting principle on that? So now anytime you touch a third rail issue, you have to look over your shoulder like, wait, am I like, am I allowed to say this? Is this stepping on somebody's toes? And so there's no such thing as a little bit of censorship. Mm -hmm. It right. always ends up with. Whatever they don't like, the corporate heads, gone. Got to get rid of it. Yeah. So the, hold on one second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the right is not supporting you. And these are all the people who are, you know, Ben Shapiro, Dave Rubin. Oh, we oh, believe yeah. in free speech and we're mm -hmm. against censorship. We're against cancel culture. I haven't heard a single goddamn a, yeah. word about a journalist getting fired from a, a, a big corporate media out. Not a single word from the right. And right. then, you know, the left, there are many on the left who are supporting you, but before we go any further in the discussion, I want to I want to say to you, how how can the people listening right now directly support you in terms of watching your show, in terms of donating to you? Because it's really important that when we have a situation where somebody gets censored for speaking the truth, and that's exactly what this is, mm -hmm. that they have a safety net. They can fall back on a group of small dollar donors who are willing to say, look, what you did was brave. You stood on principle. You were correct. So we're going to reward you for that. So tell everybody how they can donate to you and how they can subscribe to you. Thanks. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, so at youtube.com slash the Katie Halper show, where you can also find the video in question, uh, you can subscribe. That's obviously just literally press the subscribe and then press the bell. You can like the videos. That would be great. Um, also at Patreon, patreon.com slash the Katie Halper show. That's patreon.com slash the Katie Halper show for $1 a month. You get to just help support the show. Um, which nobody is getting rich off of, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. For five dollars a month, you get bonus content, extended interviews. So those are two ways that you can do it. And you know, I've definitely been like, there's. You guys have both talked about algorithmic suppression. Uh, I don't know how it functions exactly, but I do know that, for instance, I had Norman Finkelstein on uh, months ago, and he got like seventy thousand views. That video got seventy thousand views. I had him on this week, got like eleven thousand. It'll probably go up a little bit, but there's definitely my videos have not been getting the numbers they. They used to. Yeah. Um, which is depressing. But yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I look, I, I like going. I liked. Obviously, it's nice to be paid to do hosting. I also liked going into the office, getting my makeup done. I'm not going to lie. That's fun. I like like getting to look like a real anchor, you know, in this like kind of corporate setting. I actually think there's a lot of value in making left wing points in that context because so, do so I. many of the, of the left media people out there you know, we were scrappy because we don't have big corporate backing. Um, and I think that this lends it a level of gravitas and legitimacy, for better or for worse, uh, that you don't necessarily get when you're just 
you know, doing it from your home. But, um, so that's the thing that really, that the thing that really makes me the angriest though is just, and the, like the saddest is knowing that I won't be able to voice certain things and get out certain stories to a bigger audience. It's not like the clickbait or the fame or any of that stuff. Uh, it's the, it's the megaphone. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.